What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be installing an electric fan in my 66 Mustang, and I'm gonna use a temperature switch and a relay to hook it up. So let's get started. So the fan that I'm gonna go with is a Flexalite fan, and I chose this because this, I believe they call this the low boy, and I did that, on, the distance between the radiator and the pulley on the water pump is like four inches or something like that. There's not a lot of space. And so a lot of the, the aftermarket fans out there are actually pretty deep. And this is one that's designed to be a shallow fan to fit in places like that where you don't have a lot of room. You know, if you had a wider radiator, you could do dual fans, I mean, do two small fans, and then those, the, the depth of that fan would stick out and it wouldn't run into anything because of where stuff is placed. But in this motor, there's not a lot of space between that pulley on the water pump and the radiator. I'm gonna leave the radiator stock for now. Uh, I, I do plan to update it down the road, uh, but it's gonna be more or less the same size. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go any wider, but um, so in the meantime, I can go ahead and use this setup. And what we need to, to go with this is a shroud. And the reason, you could install this on your radiator. It comes with some ties that allow you to you know, put some plastic ties through the radiator and you could just secure the radiator, the fan to the radiator, but that's not really an efficient way of doing that. You're going to get a lot, you're going to lose a lot of efficiency of the fan when, when the, when it's not going to be pulling from the whole radiator, just where the, where the fan is. So by having a shroud like this, we're going to capture uh, everything inside the backside of this fan and go through, I'm sorry, backside of the radiator to go through the fan and uh, that'll be a better setup for us. You know, to do something like this, this is a, a custom piece that you guys can buy this. Um, I, I bought this off of eBay, uh, but it's designed to fit the, the size of my radiator. And this has actually a 15 inch hole cut in it. Uh, so the, the fan is a 16 inch. So there's going to be a little bit of a lip that the fan sits on here, but that's good because it gives the place for the fan to sit on this shroud. And then we're going to drill some holes through here and secure that fan to this. And then we're going to secure this to the radiator by, I got some brackets that I'll show you that in a minute, uh, what we're, how we're going to attach that here. So let's go to the bench and take a look at the rest of the parts that we're going to install. So in the box, you're going to get this instruction sheet. And these are those plastic ties that you can use to, to secure the, the fan to the radiator. We're not going to do it that way. We're going to use that shroud. We'll just put this in here like that. And it's going to more or less sit like so. What we'll do is we'll mark the holes where we need to put the bolts through to secure this on here. And then we'll also mark the holes for the tabs, uh, for the, the brackets to hold this on there. And then when we're done, we'll pull this protective layer off of this, the sheet metal. Um, I did want to point out, so see how flat this is. A lot of the, the aftermarket fans out there that you can get that are, that are cheaper, uh, have a button right here, not a button, but a, a, a raised boss. And that adds more depth to the fan and it makes it harder to fit in there. And I only know that because on my last car, I got, uh, a fan that I didn't source a, a low boy or a thinner fan and I had it was very very close between the back side of this fan and my water pump on my last car so I wanted to get the right one this time. Here's those brackets that I was talking about so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the mount uh, location of the radiator and then it's just going to step out and and we'll just bolt this on here like so and dep depending on where the bolt holes are on the radiator we'll determine where we're going to put them on here so we'll do that kind of at the end. So I was originally going to use this relay setup where you buy it's a whole kit and it's got the relay and the wire and everything and it's got a temperature probe that you actually just slide through the fan, uh, through the fins on the radiator. I didn't, I thought this might be a good idea and after looking at it, I don't know how efficient this thermocouple is uh, by picking up the temperature off the fins in the radiator. I'm sure it's fine, but I changed my mind after I bought this and I'm going to go with one of these kind of devices. And the, the problem with something like this is if you don't have a place to put this in your coolant setup, you're gonna have to either make one or buy one. On the water neck there where my thermostat housing is, I actually have a port that I can thread this into. It's not ideal uh, because it's on the back side of the thermostat uh, on the engine there, but it's be I, mean, I think it's better than, than this setup here. So I can put that in that spot. You can also put this in the stock location for the thermostat for the temperature gauge on your dash. Then you'd lose your temperature gauge and I don't want to do that. The reason why this is different than your, your standard thermocouple for your temperature gauge is this has an on off setup. It's designed, it even says here on the side, it's kind of hard to read, but there, it says 185, 175, meaning so when the temperature gets up to 185, this will ground out and allow the fan to turn on. And then when the temperature gets down to 175, this will disconnect on the inside, disconnecting the ground, and then it'll shut the fan off. With If you used 
in, this, in place of your temperature gauge on your dash, it wouldn't read correctly. And you can't use the one for your temperature your gauge on your dash because it wouldn't turn the fan off and on depending on the temperature. So we need something like this. This comes with an, an extra set here if you had a, a larger threaded uh, bung in your, in your uh, intake manifold. Or you can also buy something you can put in the coolant hoses. You can buy a piece that, that fits in there. Sometimes you can put something in the radiator. I mean, there's, there's lots of different ways you could do it. But for my setup, that's what I'm going to use is that the thermostat housing uh, on, on the engine. So how are you going to hook up a relay? What I've got here is a real basic diagram of, of, of a, your standard automotive relay. And we, what you want is one that's normally uh, open so that when this thing activates, it closes the relay. So you're going to need to come off of the battery to, to terminal 30. You're going to want to come off of a 12 volt, 12 volt switch source to terminal 86. We're going to go at 85 down to the sensor, which is this guy here, which will end up being your ground and then from terminal 87 to the fan. And what's going on here is you've got a 12-volt switch source, and as it comes to the relay, when this temperature gets to, to 185 degrees, this is going to close, grounding it out, which is going to close the circuit in here and allow electricity to flow through this way. And so while we've got battery you know, terminal hooked up here, nothing's happening until this circuit closes, and then it'll send electricity to the fan, and we'll go through the fan, and, and it'll turn the fan on. And then when the temperature gets low, this will you know, disconnect from the ground, essentially, closing the circuit and cutting the power off to the fan. Real basic setup. In, you know, your standard relay will do this. I happen to have a relay in my car, and uh, I'm not using it anymore. I changed the way I was doing some wiring in there, and I've got a relay that's set up, so I've got this part already set up, and I've already got that set up. I just need to grab this wire, which I will you know, run over to, to here, and then I need to set this up so I can connect to this fan. I need to get the fan installed first, but that's, it's gonna be simple for me, but for you guys, this is one of the ways that you can do it on your car. And so one of the advantages of using that temperature probe that goes in the fins of the radiators, you don't have to drain the coolant for the setup. Because this port is below you know, the radiator, I mean, not below the radiator, but it's, the, the fluid level is up higher, I do need to drain some of the coolant out so that when I take this, this out, it doesn't spill coolant everywhere. So let's just take the cap off. And then we need to open that valve down there and let some coolant into this bucket and just get the, just get the fluid level down just a little bit so we can open up that port. Now we're gonna take this port out and make sure that we got the coolant you know, low enough. And you can see the coolant's not coming out, that's good. Let's go ahead and thread in that temperature sensor and make sure everything fits there. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that later and we're gonna put some Teflon tape on that and finish that out. But now we need to get this fan blade out of the way. It may be easier for you to remove the radiator. Um, that, that's something that might be an option for you guys. I think we can get to the bolts here on the front side of the fan without doing that. So I'm gonna give that a shot because otherwise you need to completely drain the coolant if you're gonna move this radiator. So we're not gonna need this fan anymore, we're not gonna need the spacer, we're not gonna need these bolts, but we do need to continue to, to have that pulley on the water pump bolted to that water pump. So you're gonna need to get some more fasteners. These are 5 16 by 24 thread. Um, I believe this is 3 quarters of an inch. Um, you don't want it to be too long because you'll run into the pump, but this should probably work. And then uh, don't forget a lock washer on there, and then we can go ahead and just secure this back up to the water pump. So now's a good time to start test fitting the parts and make sure that everything lines up as expected. And then we'll put the fan in. And everything, you want it to be snug and tight up against the radiator so we can see how much place, how much space there is between the fan and the water pump. And that may be difficult to see, but there's about 3 16 of a gap between the shaft on the water pump pulley and the back of this fan. So we're good. We've got plenty of room. That's, that's a plus. 
So I can go ahead and start getting the shroud ready to accept the fan. So now we want to get the holes marked on here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to center this fan on this, this, or this shroud. Just do the best I can to kind of get everything centered. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie and mark the holes that I need to drill for mounting this. All right, there we go. We got our marks on here. I can go ahead and drill this out and get sure everything ready there. I'm just going to be using some quarter 20 fasteners for this, so a quarter inch hole will be sufficient. Now that we got those holes drilled, let's go ahead and get the brackets set up uh, on the radiator so that we know where to mount, you know, put the holes in for, for this part of the bracket. So we're just going to use these bolts that are securing the radiator to the core support. We'll put it through the bracket and that'll that'll position where these brackets are going to go. Then I can slide that shroud in here and then we can mark on the shroud where these holes line up and then uh, and then get that thing ready for for mounting. You know what's slick about these brackets is that they're they're shaped at a an offset here so you can get to the bolt without having to try to fight the end of this bracket. So I like that design. All right, now that we got those mounted in there, let's go ahead and just test fit this shroud. And you'll notice that these are kind of flimsy so we can kind of move them over if we need to to, to kind of tighten things up. But we're going to want to center, you know, the shroud on the radiator, you know, vertically and horizontally. And once you find that spot, then we're going to mark where these are. Now remember, we can move this in, but we do just, well, at least we just want to mark where it's at. Okay, I just went through a whole thing about drilling these holes out and getting everything all cleaned up and I didn't realize that the camera wasn't on. So anyways, just to sum up, this is I just went ahead and notched these holes out and got them cleaned up on the back side here. So we can go ahead and we're going to put these little tabs and use these fasteners. This came with those bracket kit for supporting this to the, the radiator. We're just going to slide this on here and then we're going to go through the bracket that's already mounted on the car and then we're going to thread into this and this will just pinch onto here and it's probably not ideal but given the, the space that we have, this it's almost like this this needs to be wider, this edge here, and it's not. So um, we're going to just have to use uh, what we got and make it work. What I'm going to do is just cut a piece of loom here. I'm going to I'm going to zip tie this stuff to here and just kind of clean it up a little bit so it looks a little nicer. Now we got this set up, we can go ahead and when we get in the car, we can finish wiring this up. Let's go ahead and get this thing mounted to the shroud. forget to put these little tabs on here that we're going to use to secure this to the brackets. And right, now that we got everything in place, you just kind of have to kind of move things around and, and you might have to bend the bracket out to get things in there, but I think we're in a good spot so we can go ahead and start to put these screws in. And I'm just going to kind of put them in there loose until I get everything set and then I can go back and tighten everything up. All right, so now that we got everything tightened up, uh, everything is nice and secure. Now we're good to go there. We can go back and start looking at the electrical side of getting this hooked up. So now I want to finish setting up this wiring here. What I need to do is I need to take the red wire here and come over to this wire. Now remember, I already had a relay installed, uh, set up, and I wasn't using it anymore. So I'm going to utilize the, the correct wire, you know, the, the, the correct terminal off that radio, uh, relay 
connect those together so that gives me the power and then I need to ground this and you can pick any ground you want I think I'm just going to share this ground over here that's already got a hole drill but you can find someplace closer if you'd like and then this wire here we need to take a wire and go over to to the thermostat over here and I'm just going to use just this wire here and just connect this up and this just has a, a, a connector a spade connector on the back that we can just plug in here and then we're set but the nice thing is, is I can take this and when we're going to test this, I can just put this to ground. And by doing that, it's going to activate the relay and should turn the fan on. So let's get everything wired up and then we'll test it out. Okay, everything's wired up. I even kind of went as far as putting stuff in the loom, although I probably shouldn't do that just in case. Um, but what I'm going to do now is the source I'm using, the 12 volt source I'm using to trigger the relay to turn it, you know, to give that 12 volt switch source is coming off of this terminal here on the starter solenoid. I need to have the car running for this to be a good 12 volt source. But what I can do is just bypass that by hooking up, you know, straight from the battery to here. And then I can take, remember this wire is going to go to the temperature sensor. And if that reaches, if that's at 185 degrees, this would be grounded. So let's see what happens uh, when we ground it. All right, that's a good sign. That means everything's wired up correctly. Um, now we're just going to rely on that temperature sensor do, to do its right, or the temperature uh, probe there to do its job and turn this fan on when it's time. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this dialed in and, and cleaned up, and then we'll go from there. And the last thing that we need to do is get some Teflon on this uh, sensor so we can thread it in here and it won't leak on us. All right, and then hook this up. Okay, now. Uh, we do we need to put the coolant back in and other than that we are set to go. These are tight Remember, we tighten that up. Uh, this is not touching. So that's good uh, These are this is mounted securely. It's wired up. We tested the fan. This is in place We got the Teflon there. Just put the coolant back in and then we're done All right, that's it. That's an installed electric fan uh, I think for you guys want to make sure that uh, if you need to bleed the system, you know, from taking that coolant out, depending on how much you got in there, you might want to might want to do that. Also, it's a good time to fire up the car and let it get up to temp and, and make sure that turns on. Um, what you can do, you can also run a wire uh, and, and intercept this wire that's going to the, to the thermometer. And you can set it up to a switch where you can turn the fan on when you want to turn the fan on. If you think maybe it's getting too hot or whatever your reasons are, maybe you just want to cool it off. With the car out, whatever you want to do, you can set it up so that you can have that fan run independent of that the temperature device. So, you know, and also the the distance in between the fan and the water pump pulley, there's that that shaft that's sticking out. You can cut that down if you want to, uh, maybe you know, quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. Cut that down, and that'll just give you a little more distance. On my last car, I actually used shallower head bolts to give me just you know another. 16th of an inch or whatever it was my my last car. It was a lot closer uh, than this one is but this is a lot This is gonna be a lot better for me uh, So we should be good and I'm anxious to get the car out and see how it does So guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up and if you subscribe I appreciate because it, it helps my channel out and we'll see you in the next one